I think everyone knows Trevor Lawrence is going number one to the Jaguars, but now it's kind of who's going to go after that. And obviously the Jets with the number two pick, that's the big question as they're going to be looking for a quarterback and all these pro days. And I think the biggest one that got the most publicity was Zach Wilson because he made like that 60 yard bomb off the back foot. Obviously no one was in his face, but it was a perfect throw. So I, I will give him a lot of credit for that. Cause it's not like I, I can do anything like close to that or anybody could like, that's just shows his raw talent. I, I will say that, but it still is only a pro day. I definitely want to just point that out, but it seems like the jets, like all of like the sources and the rumors are saying that the jets want to take him. And I, I just think it's really interesting. Cause to me, I think he has all the intangibles to be this star QB. I mean, like we were talking before, like about how like his comps are like Rogers and Mahomes. I don't know if he's going to be that good, but I think he has the intangibles to be a very, very good quarterback in this league. But I just think he needs some coaching like Mahomes. He sat behind Alex Smith for a full year. Like, I don't think looking at Wilson, I don't think he'd do that with the jets. And like the first year may be a little rough and may throw a lot of interceptions and he may have to learn a lot. And to me, it's like, do the jets have that coaching? Do you trust the coaching to develop him? That's kind of my thing with Wilson and it's going to be interesting because I love Wilson. I've been high on him for a while, but it's like, he is raw. And like, that's something that would worry me, but all that potential is is so much potential. Yeah. I mean, look, as a Jeff fan, you know, I, I, let me just start off by saying, you know, I like Sam Donald, but the simple fact is at this point, I think it's best for both the jets and Sam Donald to split up and to go their separate ways. And I think both teams can be better off that way. So going into the draft, I do want Donald. I, you know, obviously we heard these reports, Oh, trading down or, Oh, maybe they'll like take Sewell at two. And then they'll like have this great offensive line. I, and look, Joe Douglas is very good at hiding his hand and he's very good at, you know, not really giving away what he wants. And the same thing with Robert Sala so far, you know, all this talk of the Jets trading down, apparently San Francisco was very interested in getting Zach Wilson. And, you know, they got, they gave up a lot to move up to three. And the fact that the Jets, I would assume San Francisco maybe offered them even more and move up too. And the fact that the Jets said no. And also we know Douglas coming from Baltimore is a guy that's kind of, you know, under the Ozzie Newsome idea of being a GM, trading back, accumulating picks. The fact that the Jets are staying in a two so far, to me, is a pretty clear sign that they're going to take a quarterback there. And I think it's going to be Wilson. And if that's the case, I'll be incredibly happy because – I'm he's the guy I want. I think he's got the, t- the natural talent, the ability. He's got that quick release, which I love the ability to use arm angles. He's got a little bit of Matthew Stafford in him, a little bit of, of Justin Herbert in him. Obviously there's talk of Mahomes and Rogers. I don't want to go that far, but he's so intriguing. And with the draft, you never know with any of these guys, even Lawrence, who everyone's saying like, Oh, he's going to be the perfect pro cop transition is going to be so smooth. You never know. So it's a gamble for everyone. And Wilson is the guy I'm willing to gamble on. He, he, he's, if you, t- if you talk about it like that, like he's definitely the most, like he's the most upside. So like, to me, like you can definitely see that Wilson, he's also a guy that like, you know, this whole new jets regime, like he's going to make the highlights. He's going to make the big plays. And, you know, he's someone that, I mean, like you see his potential and it's there. It's just like, can the jets, you know, can they coach him up to be that maybe Michael four, he's the guy, you know, especially coming from like this new age of, you know, offense where you spread him out and do all that stuff. I mean, kind of similar to what like Mahomes does and like, you know, that type of stuff. I mean, it'll be very interesting to see what he can do, how the Jets could build around him if that was the case. Cause obviously you look at all these great, you know, quarterbacks, they got great weapons around them as well. So like that will be something, especially if he starts to progress and stuff like that. But I mean, Wilson's just one heck of a prospect. And I do want to move over to another really one heck of a prospect, and that is uh, Justin Fields. And there was some news about him with uh, Dan Orlovsky saying like he's the last guy in and the first guy out which I mean, you had Kirk Herb Street call it reckless, just straight reckless. So that's something that I don't, I don't think is true. I mean, you just look at what he did in the, the national championship, you know, semifinal where uh, he was playing with broken ribs and, you know, he outdueled Trevor Lawrence, whatever you want to talk about that. He did play better than Lawrence in that game. And you just see that he, to me, will be more of a pro ready guy than, than Wilson. And maybe that would be better for the Jets. But then also, you know, you look at that. I don't think his, his ceiling is, is, is as high as um, a guy like Wilson. But to me, he's he's definitely two or three. And then you have you know some people like with the 49ers, if they're going to take Mac Jones at three, which I think would be a huge, huge mistake. And yeah. I, I honestly, I, I think that's just like a smoke screen so they can, you know, take a guy like Justin Fields. But to me, he's a guy that, you know, he can run, he can pass. He's, you know, pr- pretty good at reading defenses, but that could be an issue. I mean, really for any rookie, you know, again, you don't know what you're getting out of him. But I think he definitely has more pro skills when you're looking at 
uh, Wilson, I, he played at Ohio State. You know, he played some better competition, which, again, it, the NFL is still the NFL. It's much higher than any college game, but still that's something to be talked about. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of high on both of these guys for different reasons, but it should be Lawrence 1, Wilson, or Fields 2 and 3. Like, anyone else in the conversation, like Mac Jones, I think he's all right. I think Trey Lance, like, I think they'll probably be in the top 10, but not top three. I mean, it, it's like these three guys are definitely the best. Yeah, I mean, with Justin Fields, look, I do think that he's probably, uh, I mean, going into before, you know, obviously we got into all these pro days and the draft buildup, he was pretty much for, for a while, at least obviously early on in the NFL season and then, you know, college football still going on. Most people consider him like the consensus number two quarterback. So I do definitely think, you know, it, he's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle of all the Wilson hype. You know, I still prefer Wilson personally just because I'm so – he just looks so loose out there, looks so comfortable. Like, he just looks like the guy. You know, he looks like a guy who can be that quarterback of the future. Um, look, Fields, I, I, like you said, I don't buy that stuff about him not being like a good leader. I think the fact that he's played so injured shows that he is one. Um, you know, I, I don't think he's going to be Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. You know, I don't think he's going to be that kind of like, but, but my, my larger point is though, with the Ohio State quarterbacks is you, I understand that like people say this doesn't mean anything, but like I, when, when all these quarterbacks played so close together in a very similar system. So, you know, you had JT Barrett, you had Cardell Jones, you know, you had Braxton Miller, you know, Trail obviously Pryor. you had Dwayne Haskins, Terrell Pryor, that's going like a little further back still, yeah. but you know, <laughs> they, they all come playing the similar system at Ohio State kind of all, all have very well, there's differences between them. You know, Cardell was more of like a pocket guy and, you know, some of them are more mobile than others. But like, you know, the, the, the fact that they all played in the system and like none of them have really translated to the NFL. Like, I understand that people say it doesn't really mean anything. But look, they said the same thing about Darnold coming out of UFC and now look what's happened. So like, I'm not going to buy that completely. And on the flip side of that, I know BYU is not a powerhouse school for quarterbacks. And I understand Steve Young went there like 30 years ago or 40 years ago. But, you know, uh, you know it's it's, it's just, it's, it's always kind of interesting to look back on the quarterbacks that have come out and see what's kind of happened. Um, but in terms of competition level, you know, I, I don't really put a lot of stock into that just because you look for every college player, the NFL competition is higher. So sure. If you play at Alabama, LSU, are you going to play better players? Sure. But at the end of the day, everyone's playing better players. The competition level is the highest. Everyone's going to have to adapt. So I don't put a whole lot of stock into that. And, you know, also it just, it's sometimes like, having you also gotta think about the, the level of talent around Wilson. I mean, he's throwing to guys, the wide receivers who are honestly going to be working at a real estate firm in, a, in like a few months, like they're not making the league. So it's just, there's a lot of different factors to consider. Uh, look, if the Jets took two at, at uh, just a field at two, I, I, I wouldn't be like super upset. I, I, what am I talking about? I'd be upset. What I, I really want Zach Wilson, but I, I think, I think Justin Fields can be very good. Um, and I think he seems to be the guy for San Francisco at three, like you said, there's been talk of Mac Jones. I don't really buy that. Um, you know, there's been talk of Mac Jones with the Patriots. Who knows what they're thinking with quarterback? I don't think Cam is the long-term answer. The question is whether they can trade up and get someone or anyone will fall to them. You know, Bill isn't really someone that's ever traded up before. I don't think he's not really that type of guy. But his draft acumen isn't exactly like his track record isn't the best. So, look, it's very intriguing what's going to happen with these quarterbacks. I can't deny that Zach Wilson is the one that I'm most interested in, but – I think all of them had the potential to succeed at the next level. I mean, before I, I make my point, I mean, BYU quarterbacks got to talk about Taysom Hill. Got, got oh, of course, Taysom there. Hill. Well, Steve, <laughs> I, I start off with the Hall of Famer. I, I could also mention Jim McMahon as well. But, you know, obviously, look, uh, the, the track record thing is, you know, who knows how much that really means, but it's something interesting to think about. I mean, to me, like, like I think Ohio State is like, because you're right, like, I mean, not a lot of Ohio State quarterbacks have hit, but every prospect's different. And, and, I, and I don't think teams, like, look at, like they're looking for intangibles. They're looking for different skill sets. I mean, I don't think like they're looking at like, Oh, like he was really yeah. good at Ohio state. Yeah. It's like, we know we're going to yeah. draft him high. So I don't think every quarterback's the same. And like you talk about how like Haskins, he had a big arm. Cardell Jones had a big arm. Whereas guys like, you know, Braxton Miller, you know, smaller, smaller arms, you know, I mean, fields, I think he has a good arm, not as good as Haskins, but I think he's still good. Um, definitely. Like, I mean, probably not as good as Wilson, but still really solid. That's what I'm talking about. He's like more of that. I, I just think he's more of a safer bet, but I mean, like I could definitely see the Jets kind of taking that, you know, taking that that leap for Wilson. And hey, that, that that's a really good pick. I mean, I've been high on Wilson for a while, so that's not something I would be, you know, mad about, you know, for if I was a Jets fan. Because I mean, you just look at those, as I said, those physical intangibles—they're just there.